Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, dwyerfootball.blogspot.com. You know, I made a video, I made a video, um, oh, a few days ago in which I discussed why I thought Eli Manning is better than Peyton Manning. Well, I've gotten a bunch of emails on that subject. Apparently, Eli Manning quietly has become one of the more controversial figures in sports. In fact, Kurt Warner, a quarterback who I think is a definite Hall of Famer, Kurt Warner gave an interview in which he said that he didn't believe that Eli Manning was in the Hall of Fame just yet, right? Uh, I even went uh, out yesterday to uh, my favorite bar, and the bartender came over and disagreed with me on whether Eli Manning was a Hall of Famer. Folks, I think he's in the Hall of Fame right now. I mean, as we speak, I believe he's clearly a Hall of Famer because if his career were cut short, let's say he discovers that he has um, some illness or some congenital uh, situation that would require him to retire right now, right? Well, the bottom line is if he were to step away from the game, over time we would realize that here's a guy who won two Super Bowl rings in a short period of time. He was drafted the same year as Philip Rivers, right? Philip Rivers doesn't have any rings, right? I know Ben Roethlisberger has two rings, but keep in mind, Roethlisberger's situation is very different than Eli Manning's situation, right? Because the Steelers were favored against the Seattle Seahawks. The Giants were never favored in either Super Bowl that they faced. Also, Roethlisberger beat people like Matt Hasselbeck in the Super Bowl. He beat Kurt Warner. Great Super Bowl, right? But at the same time, he didn't beat an unbeaten team like Eli Manning did in beating New England the first time around. Let me go one step further. You know, I believe Ben Roethlisberger is a Hall of Famer as well. And so people who are comparing Eli to Ben Roethlisberger are already comparing him to someone who, in my opinion, is going to end up in Canton regardless. Well, let's think through the things that make Eli Manning a Hall of Famer. Understand that before Eli got over 4,900 passing yards this last season, Eli already had multiple 4,000-yard seasons. Not only that, when you look at Eli's postseason record, he's so many games over 500 that the only way that can possibly change is if the Giants make the playoffs several years and then lose their first game in the playoffs. And if that were to happen, Eli Manning would have an excellent regular season winning percentage to go along with two Super Bowl victories. Not only that, um, keep in mind, in those Super Bowls, Eli Manning passed for over 100 yards in both fourth quarters, right? Also, Eli Manning, unlike Ben Roethlisberger, has two Super Bowl MVPs. If you compare him to Ben, and I believe Ben is in the Hall of Fame, if you compare him to Ben, you know, Eli Manning has never had a Super Bowl as bad as Ben Roethlisberger had against the Seattle Seahawks in one of the worst Super Bowl performances by a quarterback in NFL history, right? Eli Manning, the opposite happens. He shows up in the postseason, then he shows up in the Super Bowl. And let's remember, Eli also has additional postseason folklore outside of the Super Bowl. He's the quarterback who beat Brett Favre in Brett Favre's last game as a Green Bay Packer in an NFC Championship game. He also beat a pretty excellent defense in the San Francisco 49ers. If coach of the year Jim Harbaugh is able to lift that team into the Super Bowl, then that matchup against Eli Manning uh, that took place this last year in the NFC Championship game is going to take on even more significance. And so my point is this, any quarterback 
who's off to the nice start to his career that Eli Manning has been off to. And keep in mind, he was having a pretty good year, the year that Plaxico Burris shot himself in the leg and then things fell apart. People don't blame Eli Manning for that bad year, right? But keep in mind, Eli statistically had a pretty good year that year. That's in addition to the two Super Bowl years that the guy has had, as well as other playoff years. So Eli Manning, quite frankly, with two Super Bowl rings, uh, this early in his career, he's still in his prime, folks, right? He has more rings than Aaron Rodgers, quite frankly, right? And he's still in his prime. With two Super Bowl rings off to this fast to start, if something, God forbid, were to happen to him that prevented him from playing, I think he has enough of a resume where we would do what we did with Gale Sayers. We would extrapolate the success he's had into the future, and we would say, wow, this guy's a Hall of Famer right now. And of course, if he continues playing, well, he has Dominic Hickson to go with Victor Cruz, to go with Mario Manningham, to go with Hakeem Nix on a team that still has a pretty good defense. Guys like Justin Tuck, guys like Jason Pierre-Paul, they're going to be back next year. There's no reason to believe with these new rules that limit what defenses can do to wide receivers. There's no reason to believe that Eli Manning, who already has several 4,000-yard passing seasons and who just polished off a 4,900 passing yard season. We're overlooking it simply because of what Tom Brady and Drew Brees did, but it was, uh, and Matthew Stafford, but it was one of the best statistical seasons passing in NFL history, quite frankly, when you look at all of the numbers. Eli Manning is not only an elite quarterback today, quite frankly, he's done enough to put himself in the Hall of Fame. Now, I know I'm going to hear from Ken Stabler fans who remember that after the Snake left the Raiders, he played for several years with teams like the New Orleans Saints and apparently hurt his legacy and got himself taken out of the Hall of Fame, right? It's possible that Eli Manning stinks up the joint so bad that we forget what he's done in the past. But let me just say this. The Snake didn't have the two Super Bowl wins or better yet the two Super Bowl MVPs that Eli Manning has right now right while the snake had many memorable plays he didn't have a Super Bowl defining play like Eli Manning had with David Tyree and quite frankly over time if Tom Brady goes on to more Super Bowls and more glory, especially against teams other than the Giants. Over time, that Mario Manningham catch in this last Super Bowl, the most watched Super Bowl in history, might take on added significance, right? And so my point is Eli's off to a faster start to his career than Kenny Stabler was. And also in today's NFL, where fans are more impatient, fans are more active, they're on things like sports radio that didn't exist in Kenny Stabler's day, right? They demand change, players change teams more than they did in the past, not just bad players, but good players, right? Guys like Reggie White change teams, Randy Moss changes teams, right? Superstars change teams today. Drew Brees, right? Change teams. In this era, I don't even think that any team would allow Eli Manning to have several bad seasons to take himself out of the Hall of Fame. If Eli Manning suddenly becomes a quarterback who can't throw for 3,000 yards in a season, my guess is that he would be politely pushed out as Peyton Manning a superstar is being pushed out by the Indianapolis Colts, right? Today, we have a much shorter margin of error. I think Eli Manning's a Hall of Famer. 
I disagree with my man Kurt Warner, who quite frankly I thought was one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. I know Eli has been inconsistent, but this is football and we really do remember guys by the number of Super Bowl wins and by the dramatic plays they've been involved in. Right? You say Ben Roethlisberger, two rings, three Super Bowl appearances, Santonio San Holmes in the corner of the end zone. Let me also talk briefly about Jim Plunkett. You know, let's face it. The Raiders are being blackballed from the Hall of Fame. There's a different standard in judging Raiders. Um, I don't know how Ray Guy gets on the all-NFL 75th anniversary team and yet is still not in the Hall of Fame, right? One of the best DBs I've ever seen in my life, Lester Hayes, today is not in the Hall of Fame. Ronnie Lott's hero, the standard at safety in the 1970s, the hardest hitter pound for pound I've ever seen. Jack Tatum, the assassin, is not in the Hall of Fame. How Tom Flores wins two Super Bowls. And keep in mind, you know, this is years before Tony Dungy and Lovey Smith and Mike Tomlin. You had a minority coach win the Super Bowl, and he does it twice. And yet he's never a finalist in Hall of Fame consideration. How that happens is just bewildering. Even Al Davis took several years to make it into the Super Bowl, uh, to make it into the Hall of Fame. And of course, you've heard me earlier in this video talk about Kenny Stabler. I believe that Jim Plunkett, Stanford guy, Raider, two-time Super Bowl winner, is not in the Hall of Fame in part because of really a structural bias against the Raiders. Also, Jim Plunkett apparently wasn't the MVP of those two Super Bowl wins, right? He wasn't being feted like Eli Manning is being feted today. Also, Jim Plunkett had some very rough times in the 1970s with the New England Patriots first, and with the San Francisco 49ers, right? Uh, Plunkett was riding the bench. Didn't really get a chance to play extensively. Eli Manning, by contrast, was starting by the middle of his first year, taking over for Kurt Warner, who I believe is a Hall of Famer, right? So I think that Eli, because he's a giant and not a Raider, and because of the hall, rightly or wrongly, seems to favor players on certain teams and not others. I believe Eli Manning would get much better treatment from Hall of Fame voters, even if he were to walk away from the sport today, than Jim Plunkett ever has. Look, I know the world's unfair. All I can say is, if you're a Raider fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, the Raiders have a whole group of other guys, guys like Todd Christensen, who aren't on people's radar, but when you look at the numbers, you say, wow, this guy really was one of the best of his era, right? Somebody's got to ask themselves why the Raiders were so dominant in the 70s, but yet guys like Tatum are not in the Hall of Fame. So, um, I think the Plunkett example is an interesting one. Understand that Plunkett is the only other quarterback with two wins, who's eligible, two Super Bowl wins, who's eligible, who's not in the Hall of Fame, right? And so, um, you know, I believe once uh, Tom Brady obviously is not in the Hall of Fame, nor is Eli because they're still playing. But certainly I believe once Tom Brady becomes eligible, he'll get in the Hall of Fame. I believe Eli Manning, once he becomes eligible, he'll get in the Hall of Fame. Based on what he, he's done to date, I believe it's enough. Let me hear from you, the football public. Leave your comments for me here online. And of course, visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and dwyerfootball.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.